Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Cynthia Uchendu and here we talk about how to cultivate an atmosphere of heaven on earth and to make Jesus famous. I'm so excited that you're here today and I'm even more excited that you're going to be a part of the family by subscribing. So make sure that you subscribe and when you do hit the bell so that you know every time I upload a video. All right, so as you can tell from the title of today's video, we're going to be talking about help. I need to discern my dream to see if it's from God, if it's from Satan, or if it's from myself. And so I'm going to do that with you guys by walking you through a dream that I had recently. So I have the dream here. I have notes here. So I'm going to be looking over there and reading it off for you guys. So it says, I had a dream where I was in a garage-like setting in a van with the lights on in the car. Two men approached the car trying to get in and harm me. The doors weren't locked, so I got out and ran. I kept screaming, asking the attendant for help, but no one wanted to help me. I called 911 several times, but the line was not working. I just felt like all the outlets that were supposed to help failed me. I even heard the attendants laughing and mocking me that, oh, they just said they wanted to see you or something. And that was the end of that dream. And so now I'm going to walk you through how I was able to discern whether that was from God, Satan, or myself. So immediately when I woke up from that dream, it was very, very early in the morning. I can't even remember the time it was, but it was really, really early. I woke up and I wrote the dream down. So one key to unlocking your dream is writing down as much as you can remember. That is the best way for you to go back and ask the Lord to help you decipher what happened in the dream. So write down as much as you can remember, have your phone, have a, a journal, whatever it is that you have um, access to at that time, write it down word for word. And so I wrote it down and then the Lord spoke to me and said, read Psalm chapter three. I said, okay, Lord, let me read Psalm chapter three. Hopefully it's a lot better than this dream I just encountered, right? I'm just going to read Psalm chapter three, verse one to four. And it says, Lord, how they have increased who trouble me. Many are they who rise up against me. Many are they who say of me, there is no help for him in God. But you, O oh Lord, are a shield for me, my glory, and the one who lifts up my head. I cried to the Lord with my voice, and he heard me from his holy hill. And so as you can see here, David is saying that, you know, David encountered something similar to me, and you know, but his was in real life. Mine was in a dream. And David is saying, you know, people are rising up against him. Many are the people who rise up against me. And they're even mocking me essentially and saying, hey, there is no help for him in God, right? equivalent to my dream. I had a dream and, and I just felt like no one was helping me, right? The people that were supposed to help me were not helping me. And so, but David goes on to say, but you, O oh Lord, are a shield for me. You are my glory and the one who lifts my head high. And verse four is key. It says, I cried to the Lord with my voice and he heard me from his holy hill. That's very important. And so in the dream, I saw that I was crying out for help, but nobody was helping me. So that was one sign that I was able to see, hmm, that I was able to say, hmm, I don't know that this dream is from the Lord. It's not the nature or the character of God because David is saying, Lord, when I cried out to you, you heard me from your holy hill. And so if you look at Psalm chapter seven, verse one to two, that's the next scripture I just wanna um, point out. It says, oh Lord, my God, in you I put my trust. Save me from all those who persecute me and deliver me, lest they tear me like a lion, rending me in pieces while there is none to deliver. And so again, David here is basically saying that, listen, God, I know you to be one who saves. And so that's another way that I was able to figure out, hey, this is not the Lord. This dream that I'm having is not God. God did not give me this. This is not his desire for me to experience this torment and this fear because his nature, his word is saying that, God, you save those who are persecuted, right? And then lastly, I just want to read and I think this is like the one that I was like okay this is it Psalm chapter 9 verse 9 to 10 and it says the Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed a refuge in times of trouble and those who know your name will put their trust in you for you Lord have not forsaken those who seek you amen and so you know in reading this I'm like okay Lord so clearly everything that the the psalm is saying is contrary to what I experienced in my dream in my dream I cried out for help no one helped me in my dream I felt abandoned in my dream I felt afraid in my dream I felt humiliated 
alienated. And your word is saying that you are a refuge for the oppressed. And so, you know, that was a way for me to be like, okay, this is not God because God wouldn't want me to feel tormented or humiliated or oppressed, right? And so that brings me to my next point. You know, after you've written down the dream, then you ask yourself, how were you feeling in this dream, right? You have to figure out the emotions that you felt in the dream. Were you afraid? Were you happy? Were you sad? Were you scared? How did you feel in this dream? And for me, as I mentioned, you know, some of the things I was feeling, I was feeling humiliation. I was feeling fear. I was feeling abandonment. Clearly, these are not characteristics of God, right? He is not after making us full of fear. The Bible says perfect love casts out fear. He has not given us the spirit of fear. In fact, he's given us the spirit of power, love, and of a sound mind. So why would why would I encounter fear and, and, and be feeling tormented and, and say, oh, well, God, you, you did this to me? No, right? God also wouldn't make me feel humiliated. He's not out to shame me or make me feel embarrassed, right? That's not the will of the Father. And then lastly, in the dream, I felt abandoned. Okay, clearly God is all about relationship. He's all about adoption and bringing us into his family. And so why would I feel abandoned in this dream, feel left out, feel betrayed, and now say that God, you did this to me? So it's important to have, you know, biblical knowledge and understanding um, underneath your belt so that whenever you have these dreams or these encounters, you're able to quickly say, okay, this is not the father, right? And I'm not saying that um, every dream you have is like a, a supernatural dream. You can have like dreams that are basically telling you what's happening in real life. I mean, you can have a dream, for example, where you need to use the bathroom and you wake up and you go use the bathroom. So not every dream is like, you know, a supernatural like, oh, moment you know it's not always that but you know dreams are definitely um, an avenue in which God uses to speak to his children and so I just want to end with this scripture it's in Proverbs chapter 2 verse 6 to 7 and it says for the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding he stores up sound wisdom for the upright he's a shield to those who walk uprightly and so at the end of the day you know, after you have clicked off of this video, after you've heard everything I had to say, you know, go back to the Lord. In fact, go to the Lord first, okay? Go to him first because the Bible says from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He gives wisdom. And so there's a, there's a level of revelation and knowledge and understanding that can only come from him. And I'm not saying that all dreams that are bad, um, you know, are from the enemy. No, there are definitely dreams that you can wake up and feel troubled about or feel distraught about and be like, oh my gosh. And it can surely be from the Lord, you know? Daniel had a dream where he woke up and he was just so puzzled like huh I don't understand I need more insight um Samuel I'm even reminded of Samuel Samuel had a dream where he had to go and prophesy his first prophetic word he had to go and prophesy to Eli like listen your sons are gonna die so it's like you know it's not every dream that is like bad you know or, or that makes you feel uh, troubled that is from the enemy God can surely give those dreams when he when he does that he wraps it in love and he wraps it in redemption the goal is redemption right when it comes to interpreting your dreams when it comes to figuring out where your dreams are coming from it's important to steward them well by writing them down it's important to study the word of scripture filter those dreams through the word of God to figure out okay what I felt in the dream what I encountered you know everything that went on in the dream is that in line with the word of God, or is it contrary? Ask the Lord. He has wisdom. He has understanding. It flows from his mouth. And so, you know, I'm praying for you guys that you guys go deeper in the Lord, you know, long for him and seek him for understanding and wisdom. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.